we have another sample size formula to learn, but this one is for estimating a mean. The previous two were for estimating a proportion, say like in a survey, what percentage think this or that. But this is for estimating a mean, mu. Now there's a couple things to note in here in this formula. So S, well S is the sample standard deviation. We learned about that way back in chapter 3, and it still is true <laughs> that it's the standard deviations. So that's what S is. And the error doesn't have the percentage thing that it did on the previous page. So in the previous one, because everything's percentages, um, often the error, most often the error is given as a percentage. So right here, you know, within 2.5% made 0.025 and so on. But that's not the case here. So error is not given, um, does not need to be a decimal. Let's just put it that way. It can be a decimal, but it doesn't have to be. It's just whatever they give it to you as, that's what you use. Again, look for within. The word within often is the error. Oh, that's an E for error. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so let's look at a problem. A medical researcher is interested in the average amount. Okay, so right there. I see that this is talking about average, so that means that it's talking about the mean. Right. That means that I know I'm in this section, not the previous page, which was all about proportions, right, percentages. So it's interesting the average amount of time people in the U.S. spend on the Internet per week. Assuming an estimated standard deviation of 6.2 hours, well, there we have it, there's standard deviation. So they're telling us that S is 6.2. How large a sample would the researcher, or should the researcher collect if, and then we have different scenarios. Okay, so we're going to be playing with our confidence level a little bit here. The first one wants an 80% confidence level, and it wants to be within two hours. So it says within two. So that's our error right there. So our error, um, I'll do it in orange. It's right here. Error is two. And then the the 80% confidence gives us our Z. So we can see we're going to need a Z for the formula. I mean, I can write the formula here. Formula. It's N is equal to S times Z over the error squared. And if you want to put the little alpha over two subscript, you can. It's not required. All right, so Z. How do I find that Z? Well, remember, we go to stat, calculators, normal and we just enter our confidence level. So let me go grab StatCrunch. It's right here. And hey, I still have Stat. I'll, I'll just grab it again just for fun. Stat calculators normal. Click between and put in your confidence, which was 80. Enter. So 1.2816. 1 1.2816. There we go. All right, so that's how we found that. So now when we go over here for the substitution step, we can say it's equal to, now the S is 6.2 times, there's a little times dot there, the Z, which we just found is 1.2816 divided by the error and the error was um, two, the number two. It's as simple as that. Does not have to be a decimal. That's not the way error works for this one. It only works that way with percentages. Okay, so we're gonna go find it. <laughs> we'll see what it is. So that's our result. All right, so let me grab Desmos. Right here. Okay, so let me get rid of this old one and let me type this new one. So parentheses is where we start and then you say 6.2 times 1.2816 and then we're going to divide that by 2 and then we're going to close parentheses and square it. Now you might be freaking out and thinking, oh, it doesn't look like it does on the page. Well, if you hit division first, then it will. I just didn't bother. And then again, don't forget to get that squared by either hitting caret six and then the number two 
or hitting that A squared button right there. So you can see it didn't matter. It works either way. So it's 15.78. Okay, so 15.78. Of course, we can't talk to 78 of a person or whatever this is. So we're going to have to round to 16. Um, these were people. Notice it's significantly less, and that's because it's for average. Average just doesn't need as many people as proportions do. It has to do with the way the formula works out. Okay, so suppose instead of an 80% confidence, we switch to a 98% confidence. So we're going to see what happens when we mess with our confidence here. The error is still 2, though. So that hasn't changed, but our Z is going to become, well, let's see, let me grab StatCrunch. Keep hopping back and forth between StatCrunch and Desmos. Here we go, 98, say compute, and we get 1.2, or excuse me, 2.3263. Okay. So let's go back in here. Let's change the formula. So we know the formula, but I'll write it again. That way I get full points for the problem. S times Z over the error squared. And that can be an alpha over 2. All right, so this is 6.2. The standard deviation hasn't changed in this problem. This is substitution. And then the error hasn't changed. That's still 2 down here. What has changed is my Z. It's 2.3263 squared. Okay, so that was substitution. So now let's get a result. So I'm going to go back to StatCrunch, or back to Desmos, I apologize. Back to Desmos, and I'm just going to change this problem. So I'll just change this number right here to 2.3 oops, 3263. And there we have it. So that gives me 52.006. Oh, so close. So this is 52.006. And despite it being that small, it must round up to 53 people. It must. I didn't highlight that up here, but I'll just highlight it now. We always, always, always round up for these problems. All sample size problems are always rounded up, all of them. <laughs> so it's, it's one rule that never changes. Oh, so we just noticed something. Hopefully you did. Compare these two. So let's compare A and B. Compare A and B. So 80% confidence is up here, only 16 people. 98% confidence, 53 people. When we raised the confidence level, when we went up with the confidence level, it made our sample size increase. Hmm. Well, that's good to know. Or increases, I should say, but that's fine. I, won't, <laughs> I don't want to be past tense. Okay, so interesting. And why did that happen? Well, it happened because of these two right here. That's why it happened. Your Z got bigger, right? When you raise your confidence, your Z gets larger, and that, right, because the Z got larger. Right, that's why. Okay, so now it says, so researcher realizes there is an error. Okay, and the standard deviation was actually 7.5 hours. Now, how should they sample to be 98% confident and within two hours of the average? Okay, so still within two, so the error is still the same. 98% confident, so that means that the Z is still what it was right here, 2.3263. The confidence is what gives you the Z. In case that wasn't clear, <laughs> right? Okay, so what did change? Ah, what changed was the standard deviation. Suppose that's now the standard deviation. Okay, so formula, n 
equals s times z over the error squared. Okay, substitution. So here's where it's going to be different because we're going to have 7, or excuse me, 7.5 times 2.3623 or 3263, I keep saying that wrong, 3263, <laughs> and then divided by 2, right? The 2 has never changed. We never messed with our error because we already saw what happened with error in the previous page. So now let's see what happens when we get this. So when we get this result, let's see what occurs. So we raised our standard deviation, right? We increased our standard deviation. So let's go back to Desmos and let's raise that standard deviation. Instead of 6.2, let's make it 7.5. And there you can see we need 76.1 people, which we have to round to 77, right? You must round up. And I know it, it might feel silly, but write notes to yourself, round up. It's not about watching me this one time. You get what I'm doing. It's about going back to this problem <laughs> weeks from now and trying to remember what we did. All right, so let's compare B and C, right? When we compare B and C, we can see that raising the standard deviation, right? When we went from a standard deviation of 6.2 to a standard deviation of 7.5, raised the sample size. And that's because S, the standard deviation, is in the numerator, right? Because it's up here in the top, then when it gets bigger, it's going to make the overall thing bigger, as opposed to error. I mean, if you look at error, which is the previous page, we were messing with the denominator. When you mess with the denominator, it works opposite, right? So when you made the error bigger, it made the overall thing smaller, right? Because error is in the denominator. I guess I should have said that, right? Because error is in the denominator. Denominator is the bottom of a fraction. That's the fancy name for it, the denominator, which when I was in school as a kid, I always thought, you know, I always wanted said that in an Arnold Schwarzenegger voice, the denominator, right? <laughs> but here, right, Z is in the numerator, so we saw that was happening, and this one's because S is in the numerator, right? So when S gets larger, it makes the overall thing bigger, and when S gets smaller, it makes the overall sample size smaller. And we'll talk more about that in another couple pages.